Can you see that fear begets fear? When you believe that the end is near, the end is near. When you believe that the future is bright, the future is bright. What we can control is what we do with our lives. And when we make choices from a place of hope and preparedness, we create a prosperous future. But when we make our free will decisions from a place of fear and hyper concern, we will have a future and a reality in which we have a need to be fearful, paranoid, and hyper concerned. The way that we allow others to treat us is the way that we internally will accept treatment from ourselves and vice versa. And when we allow others to tell us what to do, and that's not us, it's not us, <laughs> God, it's not us, then that means our personal power will easily be subverted to any voice in our heads, whether it be from a spirit guide or it come from the television. We cannot allow others to choose our path. When we do that, we are circumventing the natural rhythm of our bodies, our mind, and our spirit. We are here to be alive. And yes, someday you will die. But that doesn't mean you have to die today. That doesn't mean you have to die to your dreams. It doesn't mean you have to die to your free will. It doesn't mean that you have to protect others from their fear of death. Be yourself, live your life. And if you believe through your own logical and rational decision making, that changing your habits, changing the way you live, changing the way you approach the world, is a reasonable thing to do for another person, then go do it. But if you're doing it because, oh, 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 I'm so scared, I don't know, I guess I'll just do it. Do you see that you see shrinking? You're shrinking. But when you engage and you say, what's your concern? Hmm, okay, let me think about this. Uh, show me, okay, let me think about it. And then you make a decision, you're going out, you're living, you're consuming the world, you're digesting it, and then you're beaming out your light energy. It's not about what you do, it's about the way you get to this decision. Are you thinking for yourself? Are you truly thinking for yourself? And there is a deep emotional component to all of this. I get that. But when you feel emotionally unstable, like you can't handle your life, and you rely on others to make you or help you feel stabilized or good about yourself, this is not a sustainable situation. It's very unstable, and over time, both parties will degrade from their natural way of being. My way of making you feel emotionally safe is to hear what you feel, be present with it, and let you know that that is all right, man. That is all right, dude. It's all right, lady, he, she, they. It's all right. You can feel that. But guess what? Uh, maybe I don't feel that. Maybe I don't feel that at all. That doesn't mean I'm not empathetic. It doesn't mean I'm not compassionate. It doesn't mean that I'm a monster. What it means is that I'm willing to fight for my own identity. That I'm willing to fight for your identity. And I am not, and no, 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 going to give in to the pressure that you feel regardless of what it is about. That's it, my loves, that's it. That's what true love is. In my estimation, you can have your own ideas. But here's the deal. Your ideas have nothing to do with me, and they never will. They have nothing to do with me, and they never will. We don't need to see eye to eye on that, because I know what I need. And I believe that you know what you need. And it ain't from me, okay? It's from you.